What's going on, everybody? It is December 7th. This is a recap for yesterday's DFS slate. I'm just here, hanging out on Mars. Earth was getting boring. Um, didn't want to be there anymore, so I'm um, checking out a different planet. Had a pretty good night in DFS, so I thought maybe we could uh, check out what's going on in other spots. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I didn't have a good night? The cut line was 350. I scored 346. That's usually really good. No? I, I didn't win money. I was actually down. Oh. Oh. Okay. So DFS is crazy. Didn't hit a didn't hit a cut line cuz it was 350. Okay. Okay, thanks. Bye. Never going back to Earth. Earth sucks. DFS sucks. Everything sucks. Let's get into it. All right. So, uh, FanDuel has not updated the history files yet. So, for uh, visual sake, I'll go to the live screen. Yes, I put up 346 fantasy points, which on every other day of my life has been an amazing achievement. Instead, I had $56 in entry fees and only brought back $29.70. I finished just off of the cut line in just about everything of value. Um, the cut line here in this double up was 348. The cut line here was 350. The cut line in the quintuple up was 366. That's how much, that's how heavy chalk was on a 10 game slate, which is insane, and how much it hit. It's almost unreal. So I had Rondo, Teague, Holiday, Gary Harris, Kevin Durant, Denzel Valentine, Jordan Bell, Jason Tatum, Andre Drummond. Eight of those nine guys hit 5x. Three of the guys that hit 5x were less than 10% owned. So I even had a unique lineup. One in 7.7 .7 million, in theory. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. Um, going with Tatum instead of Zebo probably cost me 50 bucks. I'm not even entirely sure why that happened. We can talk about that when we get to the power forwards. I don't even know how to objectively analyze what I did here or what everyone else did. Everybody played out of their minds. There's green dots everywhere. Uh, like, I'm at a loss for words. If you told me yesterday morning that I was going to hit 5.8x for as a team, I'd have been like, oh, cool. I won like 150 bucks. $25 down money probably the worst day this week <laughs> i don't even i don't know how to wrap my head around it so let's get into it at point guard i had rondo and teague uh, rondo heavily owned at 62 and a half percent uh he put up 26.7 in 25 minutes uh not the best out of rondo you know he's perfectly acceptable on a normal night that would have been great we also had Jeff Teague, 31% owned. He had 33 in 37 minutes. Good enough for 5.3x, which was apparently uh, what every single person on FanDuel did yesterday. Just for example, just sorting this, there's 21 point guards that hit 5x or higher yesterday. I'd say that it was reasonable outside of GPPs, or like in, including GPPs. You could have 19 of them. You would think Kyrie would have been a decent play uh, with all the Celtics news, but he underperformed. And then it's just like a murderer's row. Kemba hit 5x. Schroeder hit 5x. Alfred Payton bombed. Wasn't owned as much as I expected, which was weird. And I'm glad that I didn't pivot to him. Not that it would have made a difference, but 26 points in 39 minutes, 3.4x. Then it's 
Bledsoe hit 5x. Chris Dunn hit 5x. Uh, Collison only played 20 minutes. Not the best night in total. Um, 2.7x. And Teague hit 5x. Rivers hit 5x. And even getting the guys like Rondo and Reggie Jackson and Dennis Smith all over 4x. Jamal Murray 5x. Jarrett Jack. George Hill. Corey Joseph. Patty Mills. Tyler Johnson. Chalmers. Frank Mason. Moutier. Rogier hit 6.6x. Like, if you had Quinn Cook, he still got you to 4.3. I don't, like, I don't, everybody was, everybody was good. Like, you almost had to hit a point guard. I don't even know, I don't know what to say about it. Before the the Draymond news, I had, um... I had Teague and Quinn Cook, and I think, I know it sounds weird to say this, but I said it a lot in the live chat, I think that I was probably going to end up with Terry Rozier just to, uh, you know, differentiate myself a little bit, which ultimately would have been great. I would have had Terry Rozier and uh, Zebo instead of Jordan Bell and Rondo, so that would have been, you know, like 50 more points. <laughs> But anyway, tinker for life. That's not so much a tinker. I mean, that news came out and, you know, Jordan Bell was good. 53% owned. Next on the list. Drew Holiday and Gary Harris. Drew Holiday, 57.6% owned. 39.7 fantasy points in 35 minutes. And I had Gary Harris, who uh, was lower owned. 9.2%. I'm... I'm a little surprised by his ownership numbers there, but, you know, he put up 5.8x, 38 points, 37 minutes. I couldn't be happier there, I guess. I mean, relatively speaking. Oladipo had, like, the game that I expect him to have, 43 fantasy points in 38 minutes. His salary is just way too high right now for him to be able to provide value. Uh, Lou Williams hit 5x. Tyreek, not so great, 2.8. Um, Will Barton, 26.4 in 34 minutes. I, I would imagine Will Barton peeps aren't very happy about that. Maybe that'll bring his price down a little. Um, but, you know, Drew looked good. Uh, Gary Harris was good. Evan, Go uh, yeah, Evan, <laughs> Evan Google. <laughs> Evan Fournier was good. Waiters was good. Um, I was on Wiggins in the early part of the day, and transition to Gary Harris Wiggins with 18 and 36 minutes not very good um Buddy Heald at the big day um you know down the line 35 points in 25 minutes Danny Green with another big one 33 and 29 minutes um but you know half the people were on Drew Holiday I don't have Clay's ownership in front of me I assume it was relatively high um shooting guard was the only spot that had some like you know, pretty serious landmines, like Tyreek and you know, not necessarily Will Barton, but 3.5 is not very good. So, you know, so far, I'm at, uh, what's my average here? 5.3x. Things are looking great. I hit Gary Harris. Happy, happy, happy. We get to Durant and Denzel Valentine at small forward. Durant, 83.8%. Put up 66 fantasy points in 35 minutes. 6.6x. Amazing. Now Denzel Valentine. Nobody on him. Nobody whatsoever. And it's 730. I've got Denzel Valentine less than a percent owned in a double up. And he's going off. He's got like 20 fantasy points at halftime or something along those lines. I'm like, great. I've got this differentiation point in my lineup and it's it's popping the correct way. 30, finishes with 30 and 32 minutes, so he really quieted down, but he hit 5.9x, and to get, you know, essentially 6x off of a guy that's 0.5% is usually great. It's usually something that pushes you forward. Uh-uh. Not today. Um, and I will talk about a mistake that I made in a second. Well, not necessarily a mistake, but I didn't think about it. Um, so Giannis underperformed 47 points in 37 minutes, 3.8x. 
Um, wasn't really someone that I was interested in last night. Uh, I assume that his ownership was relatively low if the cut line ended up being 350. I know LeBron's was really low. He still went for 66 in 41 minutes. Same sort of line as Durant, but, you know, $1,800 more expensive. Uh, Butler and Barnes were both in the fours. Um, nobody was taking Gallo coming back from the injury, I would imagine. Played 25 minutes and stunk. Uh, Rudy Gay was still churning out a big night. His price is going to rise with Kyle Anderson out, unless Kawhi comes back shortly. Um, like I said, I got you know I had Denzel Valentine, but that Courtney Lee, Denzel Valentine, Bojan group all hit value. The big one to be on here, and it's one that never really crossed my mind at first, and it probably should have at four thousand was Igadala. Um, in my pivot for Jordan Bell, um, I just I forgot really to think about Igadala. And in all actuality, I probably would have dropped down from Denzel Valentine to Iguodala had I thought about it. it gave me an extra 1100 But the problem is I would have moved from Rondo. I wouldn't even have jumped up there. Maybe I would have not done this because I wouldn't have moved any other pieces around. Yeah, never mind. I wouldn't have done anything. I would have taken, I would have tried to fit Iguodala to move up at point guard from Rondo. And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to get where I needed to get anyway. So it wouldn't matter. Cool. That makes me feel better. Anyway, you wanted Iguodala. And shout out to uh, whoever was pumping Jakar Sampson in my chat. 8.1x, 28 points in 32 minutes. Um... He was pretty minimally owned in the in the double ups. He wasn't really, in my opinion, wasn't really in play in a cash scenario. Um, but in GPPs, fine. That it probably paid off great for ten percent of the people. I like. I think I saw LeBron's ownership in a double up at like three percent or something, which two years ago he. It's 25, just sort of by default. It's amazing how much this game has changed. Power forward, um, Porzingis in his comeback game, 3.2x. Eh. Aldridge, 3. Eh. Aaron Gordon, um, I liked him in the morning. I, there was no ch scenario for me to get to him. 46 points in 45 minutes. Nuts. Um I was on Jason Tatum and Jordan Bell. Jesus. Jordan Bell, 53% owned. Uh, once the Draymond news came out, that was a, an easy fire up. Unfortunately, that cost me Zebo. Tatum, uh, 32 points in 32 minutes, 5.5x. He was 12% owned, which, you know, I'm happy with the performance. I'm really interested in... And I'd love for people in the comments to maybe reach out since Zebo was 50% in those double ups. I'm interested to see why people went with Zebo over Tatum after the news that Morris and Brown were out. Because to me, that opened up Tatum for five extra minutes and some extra offensive opportunity at a salary that was set for what he was yesterday. And. I felt like the upside was there. I see so much risk in the Kings. And, you know, it was four games ago that Zebo played 20 minutes and 19 in the night before. And, like, that's the type of thing that could just happen. And I saw Tatum as, a, like, such a safer play in a cash game. And then the ownership came out, and I was just wrong. And then, you know, Zebo decided to drop 48 fantasy points in 31 minutes. Yeah, if I have those 16 points back, um, I'm in. I'm over the cut line for sure. But that's one like I. I don't see it on paper. I don't understand. It's not that I don't understand because I obviously, I singled out Zebo. Well, so did everybody else. But I was on Zebo. Uh, he was in my placeholder to start. He was in my lineup. Uh, you know, 
30 seconds before the Draymond news. And I took him out because I was like, okay, well, Tatum's the better matchup. And I was just wrong. Like, if the Cavs blow out the Kings, Zebo doesn't play 31 minutes. But if the Celtics blew them out, like, I think the Tatum still plays 30 minutes. That's a hard one for me. I'd love to hear more from other people because there's there's an angle that I'm not seeing. Um, and I, I, can't, I can't seem to figure out what it is, and I've been thinking about it for a while now. And by a while, I mean the 15 minutes that I've been awake um, and not cleaning up my kitchen. Anyway. Uh, power forward, again, you know, a lot of low guys hit value. Olenek, 5.6x. Ilyasova, 5.4. Dirk, Beasley, Trey Lyles, Jeff Green, uh, David West, Jordan Bell, Tyler Cavanaugh, Daniel Tice, Maxi Kleber, who I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but, like, with the ownership percentages, like, these dudes weren't even owned. It was just people smacking value after value after value. I don't... It's it's seriously an insane scenario where the cut line in the fifty or in my double in a five hundred and sixty person double up at three fifty and the top score in the double up was like three eighty something. That's such a narrow bar. And that's because everybody had, you know, like the same six guys or seven guys. And finally, we get to center. Uh Boogie goes bananas seventy eight points in 39 minutes 6.9x i thought in the morning that i really really liked drummond and i I thought that that would be a nice differentiation point for me to save you know close to two thousand dollars save myself from having to use one of the you know four thousand ish dollar guys and get to you know a jason tatum or get to you know, Rondo or Teague. Um, and Drummond played great. 59 points in 37 minutes, 6.2x. I got everything that I needed out of Drummond. The problem is Boogie was 50% owned and hit 6.9x. And I can make a decision that is right in a vacuum and wrong in DFS. Huh. It's hard to... It's hard to separate out the result on a slate from your performance. And I'm not entirely sure. Like I it's hard for me to balance whether or not I did well today. Because the guys that I picked were good. The guys that I picked that were low owned were good. So that in my opinion, I feel like a, that points to a scenario where I made the right decisions. But, financially, I certainly didn't. <laughs> and I don't know I don't know what the balancing point is to, like, hitting guys that were low-owned, but do I, you know, do you just throw your hands up and chalk this up to, like, one of the most unique DFS slates ever? I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But if you were at center... I know that that uh, Boogie line sounded great. I know that uh, Andre Drummond line sounded great. You know what? They weren't even the best plays at center. If you had Nickel, if you had Vooch, you put up 63 in 39 minutes, 7.8x. If you put up Horford, 53.6 in 32 minutes, 7.1x. Both of those guys, in theory, were better plays than Marcus Cousins. And they were both in play. There was a moment during the morning where I did get off of Drummond and like put in Horford. And I was like, oh, I can't do it. I like Drummond too much. Immediately made the change. But yeah, if you go down to Horford, like it gives you the ability to get LeBron probably. Or Yeah, probably LeBron. <laughs> or Giannis and you fuck it up. Yeah, so cousins, Drummond, Towns, Vooch. Horford, DeAndre Jordan showed that he still has a pulse. Cody Zeller is the only down the line guy that like really went crazy. Um, it's just a bizarre night. A Drummond 6.2x happened with 4.6% uh, ownership. So I had a what, in theory, a one in 7.7 million lineup. 
that hit 5.8x and finished out of the money in a double up. And I'm just... I'm at a loss for words. So, like I said, I don't have the history file yet to, uh, to dump it out, but... Everything's just stuck in live for right now. So we can update that at a later date. Go over sort of the performances and head-to-head -head and 50-50s. But for right now, that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to do a breakdown video. I've never seen so many lines on a damn cut line. Pew, 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 pew right down the line. Sometimes I snuck over the bar. Sometimes I didn't. But like, all right, what in the drip? What's the cut? The cut, so like, that is so insane. The cut line in the single entry dribbler was 327. The cut line in a 50-50, fucking 350. If you would have told me that I was over the cut line in the GPPs and missed and everything else, I, I probably, my head probably would have exploded. This one I missed the cut line by 0.4. I just, like, how do so many people end up on the same shit? It's sneaky. Like, this train of 382.2. There's... Three here. That's ten more. That's 20, so that's 23. That's 33. That's 35 people with the same lineup. <laughs> and like, you know, Avery Bradley wasn't any great shakes. Eric Bledsoe, not any great shakes. But they had... Boogie at 74, and Zebo at 50, Iguodala at 50. Insane to me. Absolutely, positively, 100% insane to me. DFS, man. DFS. Alright, that's it. Uh, if you like this video, I'd be surprised, but I'd appreciate a like anyway. Um, subscribe to the channel. Check me out on Twitter, where I'll probably give out better advice than I'll take. Um, I'll be on the Reddit DFS board today with projections and stuff. Um, and I'll be live before lock, starting at 7 p.m. tonight. We have a late lock, 8 o'clock, four games. Um, yeah, let's try to recover from this. Adios.